Now I need to make some additional changes to my design. First, I have a pressed in cap that's helping to seal the bearing and the shaft and I want to add an O-ring. To do this, I'll just select the O-ring generator in the power transmission panel. I'll select the surface that I'd like to place the O-ring on and a plane or a face that I'd like to reference the distance to. I'll select the O-ring that I want to use. I can select different categories based on the application. Here I'll use radial external and I'll select the Parker. I'll move it out into location. That looks like a good spot. I see a preview for the groove that will be placed and the O-ring itself. The distance seems appropriate so I'll click OK to generate the O-ring and the groove. Now my design has been updated to reflect it and I'll move on to applying a spline to the shaft. Before I apply a spline to the shaft I want to add a chamfer. So as with all the other design accelerators I'll right click and say edit using design accelerator. I'll find the appropriate shaft end and tell it that I'd like to add a chamfer. I can use a single distance, a distance and an angle, or two distances. I'll use a single distance of 50 thousandths and update the shaft. Now with the chamfer applied, I can choose a parallel spline or I'll use an involute spline. I'll select the classification of spline I want to use. Tell it that I do not want to apply the spline to a hub. If I had a fitting part, this would automatically generate a spline on the hub. In this case, I just want to set up the shaft. I'll use my cylindrical reference and then select the end plane. This will generate a preview of the spline. I can drag out the length of the spline or the angle the spline is being applied if that has a specific requirement and then press OK to generate the spline. This will modify the shaft but the spline is its own entity in the browser. So I can always right click and tell it that I'd like to edit using the design accelerator. 